Ghost of Frankenstein begins with all the town folks gathering up. Even the White Fry is there to complain about Frankenstein's castle. Pick it up right after the last film, just like how the first two films are connected. It's the curse. The curse of Frankenstein. Why wasn't the film called that? Do as you will with the castle. It's yours. Well, that's nice. The castle's gonna be public territory. We couldn't make it into, like, a bed of breakfast or something. We'll blow it up! That works too, I guess. In the castle is Igor from the last film. I guess he survives being shot and hanged. He tries defending the castle by tossing styrofoam at them, but no dice, as the villagers still have dynamite. Igor makes it into the basement, where he discovers the sulfur pit from the last film froze over, and the monster's still inside. Even though in the last film, Wolf Drop kicked him into the burning sulfur, I guess it immediately froze over. I don't really know how sulfur works, and neither does the director of the film. But either way, Igor gets him out of the sulfur, the castle collapses, and they escape into the night. Kick it over a gravestone. Then the monster is struck by lightning, which I guess charges him up. Lightning. It is good for you. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. He was charged by it in the first place. Your father was Frankenstein, and your mother was the lightning. Which is what Igor said in the last film. You mean to imply then that uh, that is my brother? But his mother lightning. Even on the last film, he was struck by lightning, which put him in the coma for the film. I guess he really was just overcharged. Lightning strike. But how did he get in here? I find him. So the two's plan is they're going to go stay with Frankenstein's other son, Ludwig. And when you know it, he's also a doctor. Must run in the blood. He's played by Sir Cedric Hardwig. He's got a daughter named Elsa, not to be confused with his brother's wife from the last film. They make it into town, and geese! The monster's no longer wearing the fur coat from the last film, now he's back to his usual gear. Igor gets directions to Luglet's place by Dorothy Gale over here. Meanwhile, the monster sees a little girl get her ball kicked onto the roof by some bullies. One of the bullies is played by a very young William Smith. monster sees this, and he decides to go help the girl. Then he gets tackled by the police. Igor breaks into Ludwig's place, and he asks to stay. But Ludwig has no intentions on helping the monster whatsoever and wants nothing to do with this. But he'll still visit him on trial. Meanwhile, Elsa is reading a book about Frankenstein. Yeah, sorry, I can't read cursive. But thankfully, we just watched some clips from the first film. The monster shows up, breaks in the door like Herman Monster, and then kills some guy. Ludwig gasses everyone, and his plan is he's going to dissect the monster. But then he's visited by the ghost of his father. So I guess now we have a title. The ghost is not Colin Clyde because he will have been long dead at this point. It should also be noted the clips from the first film, they try really hard not to show his face. Instead, Hank Frank's ghost is played by Cedric Hartwig again. And basically he's saying that the monster's only problem is he's got a defective brain, you just gotta fix it. Ludwig is taking this surprisingly well, but then again, I guess he has a patchwork monster on his table, so Ghost isn't that crazy. So Ludwig's planning he's going to use the assistant the monster killed's brain in him. But Igor plans on using his brain, and he gets his other assistant, Bomer, to do it. He says he'll have the strength of a thousand men and be immortal, which he already kind of is. But then again, the monster doesn't seem that strong if he can be overpowered by ten dudes. But Bomer agrees to do it. Also, he's played by Lionel Atwell because Universal at this time just uses all their same actors like a school play. But the monster himself wants the brain of the little girl. Continuing the theme of the monster is just an innocent victim who just wants the brain of his friend. He gets double heartwarming when you find out behind the scenes Lon Chaney Jr. who plays the monster in the film. And the little girl were actually close friends in real life. After her mother died, Lon Chaney tried adopting her, but he was refused. Either way, the operation is a success. I am Igor. Igor takes over the monster's body and suddenly it starts getting good. Hi, Igor! We'll live forever! The whole damn movie, the monster's been a plank of wood and suddenly he starts remembering to act. But then Igor goes blind. You didn't realize his blood is the same type as Kettering's. Well, that's impressive. They actually know that different blood types don't mix. 
But that's also amazing that Hank Frank was able to dig up bodies that also like had the same blood type in a time period when it was not easy at all to tell blood types, as well as all the body parts aren't just completely lopsided. Kind of also makes me wish they realized that people would have different skin tones and Monster would actually be a patchwork. But either way, Igor starts stumbling around, knocking stuff over, literally everything, and the kitchen sink explodes. I like the detail that the monster's skin is starting to melt. The house collapses on him, Elsa escapes, and the whole damn movie wraps up so fast my head's spinning. Final body count? Nine. And we are counting a monster here because sequel still, but from this point on, the monster is Igor. Now it's Ghost of Frankenstein. It's definitely a step down from the last couple films. Yeah, the acting's still pretty good, the sets are amazing, the music's nice. But the monster is definitely a downgrade. This is the first film of Al Karloff in the role, now he's played by Long Cheney Jr. Most notably played the Wolfman, but at this point he also played the Mummy and even Alucard. He can definitely play sympathetic characters, but here he's completely emotionless, doesn't even make a single sound in the film. Might as well have been anyone else in the role. He only picks up when he actually becomes Igor. The beginning and the end of the film are definitely highlights, but the middle section is kind of boring. I guess if you love the Universal Monsters, definitely watch it. But overall, 6 out of 10.